What's up everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today, we're gonna be making silicone molds. I'm gonna be showing you my process, uh, which is a combination of a few different processes that I've looked up and read on. Uh, this right here is the acrylic blank that I cut out using my K40 laser. I'll show you a tutorial on that in a later video. You can see, nice detail, very cool. This is my 3D printed mold case. And I'm actually gonna show you how to make one of these uh, from start to finish in my next video. So stay tuned for that. Should be coming out in about a week or so. So again, my process is a combination of a few different things that I've taken from researching on the internet. As you can see, the mold case is fairly thicker than the actual blank. That's part of the reason I 3D print them is because I would like really thick molds. Uh, they feel really sturdy when you fill them up with resin and you're trying to transport them from one counter to another. I've gotten really good feedback on them, so I've kept them the same way. Today we're gonna be using a microfiber cloth, hot glue gun. Of course, you're gonna need some hot glue for that. Stir stick and a couple other things. my process, I like to use tape, specifically this Gorilla Tape. Very sticky, very tacky, very thick, very pliable. It, I just love it. I buy it by the bulk, by, by the 10 pack. Um, so the process is I lay down some of this tape, put the acrylic blank on there, wipe it down with the microfiber, put the 3D printed mold casing around that and hot glue it. So what I'm doing here, I'm measuring out, you know, just a little bit bigger than the actual mold case. Just to give yourself some wiggle room. One thing you really want to make sure is that when you overlap the tape right here, uh, you wanna make sure that it's nice and tight, just so silicone doesn't go in between those gaps. If silicone happens to get in between the gaps and you, when you pull it off when it's cured, it can tear the actual mold. Now that's not really gonna affect, you know, any outcome of what you cast in there with the resin, but for presentation purposes, uh, it just makes it a lot cleaner. So here I'm wiping down the blank, getting off all my smudges and chicharron fingers and whatever I ate earlier. One more, just because it is not good to have smudges, fingerprints, or anything on there, because that will come out in your mold. So here I'm fitting the 3D printed case. As you can see, it sticks already. Um, I've actually seen and heard of people who don't hot glue, but I like the hot glue because it just gives me that extra layer of protection because you don't really want any flashing to go around. It, it leaves for less cleanup, cleaner looking mold all around. So I'd rather take the extra few minutes and make sure that everything's nice and sealed. So now that the hot glue gun is nice and hot, as you can see what I'm doing there. Let's go ahead and put some more glue. Just a nice seal all the way around. You don't have to put too much, um, it's really dependent. I have literally hundreds of glue sticks, so sometimes I put a lot if I'm in a rush. You know, I like to hold it down for about 10 seconds just to make sure it's nice and cured. So that is that right there. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so now we're gonna get over to the silicone. I like to use Mold Star 15 Slow by Smooth On. Great silicone, never give me any problems. Uh, it is a platinum cure silicone, so some things could inhibit the curing of it. Um, I can get into that a little bit more when, you know, in future videos. But this stuff is great. Some people like to eye it out, which you can totally do. I personally like to weigh it because I know 
essentially how much silicone goes into each and every mold casing that I make. Um, I've been doing this for, for a couple years now, so I better know if it's two ounces, three ounces, or four ounces. So this specific mold, um, it's a little bit under four ounces. So I'm just pouring two ounces of each, weighing it out. Um, and what I do with the extra silicone that's left over, I pour it in these little molds that I make with my 3D printer. And I give those out, you know, randomly to customers. I would definitely rather make a bunch of little molds with the excess than let it go to waste. This stuff is expensive. Uh, this gallon kit right here cost me uh, about $220 shipped. So as you can imagine, I don't want any of it to go to waste. I would rather give, out, give it out for free and let it cure at the bottom of the cup. So again, this is Mold Star 15 Slow by Smooth On. So this part right here is very, 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 very important. You want to stir, mix, stir, and mix some more. This stuff, you know, you really want to scrape the sides of your, your cup that you're mixing it in. And I do apologize, I was out of the, the camera view for a little bit there. Uh, you can see I'm getting the sides, getting it all nice and mixed up. And you definitely want to mix this stuff for at least a couple minutes. Um, the more you have, the more you definitely want to mix. This is only about four ounces, so I was able to mix it up fairly quickly, but I am doing my diligence and scrubbing the sides, scrubbing the bottoms. You just want to make sure you have a nice thorough mix of all the silicone. Um, if for whatever reason you don't mix everything thoroughly when you pour your mold, you can have parts that are not cured. So, you know, that entire mold is gonna go to waste, which we do not want. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, this stuff is expensive, very expensive. So mix, 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 more mixing. Make sure you get the sides. I can't emphasize this enough. You do not want to under mix this stuff. Now that we got everything mixed, what we're gonna do is pour our silicone in our little casing. So what I'm using here is one of those fancy doohickeys that uh, my girlfriend uses for her makeup. Silicone makeup brush from the dollar store. Best investment ever. And what I do, I like to pour just a thin coat of silicone onto the blank and get the silicone brush and kind of paint it on there. And what that does, that gets everything in its little crevices, um, really brings out the detail. Uh, you could probably try to just pour the silicone, but I've noticed I've done that in the past and I will get little air bubbles in the details. So just pour a little bit of silicone on there, brush it on there nice and smooth. Being that it is a silicone brush, it won't scratch your blank at all. I'll zoom in here a little bit more just so you can get a better idea of what exactly I'm doing. Ah, look at it. Paint it. You're painting it on there. I think some people call this a beauty coat, or something along those lines. Definitely beautiful. Mm-hmm. So after I do that, and I do that with every mold that does have detail, whether it's a little bit of detail, a lot of detail, again, it's just an extra minute or two in the process that makes sure your mold is gonna come out proper. So here is the fun part. Now we get to actually pour the silicone in there. And for some reason, this is very satisfying to me. I just like pouring it, watching it flow into all the crevices. 
some reason I usually go around and fill in the little gap in between the three printed casing and the blank first. And I usually fill them up all the way to the top. Um, I don't really like to make thin molds. I know my girlfriend who actually makes a lot of resin pieces just enjoys the thickness and the sturdiness of a super thick mold. And I always give one little drop like that. I don't know why, it helps. It helps it flow through all the little crevices, especially if you have a mold with a lot of detail. So these right here are some of my 3D printed mini molds that I pour the extra silicone in. See this one here, the little bear. Mm -hmm. So I do the same thing with this, you know, this one, it, there's a lot of little, little, little details. So I kind of dab it into there just to make sure I get silicone in every little hole, every little portion of that blank. Dab, 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 dab. More dab. And we're pouring more silicone. Yummy. So satisfying, I tell you. I don't know what it is. Now these, these blanks that I 3D printed are actually printed on a resin printer. Um, so sometimes the platinum silicone won't cure properly with a fresh uh, print from a resin printer. So I usually let these sit around for a few weeks, sometimes a month, and then I usually don't have a problem. You can see another one, little Mario mushroom guy. And people actually love these when I throw these in as freebies. Um, they message me sometimes and they just super excited that they got a free little mushroom mold. So to me, it's worth it to throw them in with customers. So I'm gonna try to mix up or scrape as much as I can here just to fill up these two molds. Sometimes I have 15 of these things laying around and I just throw them in there. Every single package gets a mold. You get a freebie, you get a freebie. They're always nice to throw in. So I was able to fill up three out of the four extras that I grabbed from my box hole uh, blanks over here that I have. I really had to scrape this one at the end, but I definitely barely had enough just to fill that one up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this stuff does cure in four hours, but I'm doing this at around eight at night and I get up at three in the morning for work. So I'm just gonna let them cure all night and essentially all of my work day and demold when I get back from work tomorrow. So let's go ahead and use some editing magic and I'll see you tomorrow for the demolding. Here we are the next day. So they are nice and cured. Yep, nice and solid. They, there was no reason they shouldn't be unless I didn't mix the silicone right because they've been curing for almost 15, 16 hours. So I peel off the tape, as you can see. I usually give a little push and it pops right out. 
And if there's any flashing, uh, which there sometimes is, sometimes you could just pull it off and it comes off nice and clean. Or you can use one of those uh, finger cuticle cutter things, which I do have a few of. This is another very satisfying part for me. A little bit of flashing right there, but you can just peel that off. Comes off no problem. So there we go. Nice and shiny, nice and thick. Mm -hmm. Going right out to a customer today. Now we will demold those little bits, little extra ones we did. As you can see, I used the other side of my cuticle cutter. Check that one out. And people, we can use these for keychains or magnets, anything they can set their little minds to. I personally like this Mario mushroom. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. This bare one here, I actually have a acrylic blank of something very similar, but I like to use this one for the extras just because it's quick and I can have it handy. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope uh, you, you learned something. I hope you can take something from this and utilize it towards your own molds. Drop some questions, subscribe, Watch out for my next video. I'm going to be showing you more tutorials, um, specifically how to make the 3D printed ace. Thanks again.